Would you stand and greet one another in the name of Jesus? And I want you, and I want to remind you, offer your hand of friendship and welcome to someone near you today. Not as a mortal, but a man of God. Let's invite the Holy Spirit in. Sing with me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. fresh on me. Amen. Let's pray together. Prayers in your bulletin, this opening prayer. Say with me, light of all lights, be our vision this day. Open our eyes to behold your glory. Open our hearts to the warmth of your love. Open our minds to the flame of your truth. Open our souls to the glory of living children of light that others may see in our living the sacred mystery of your kingdom. Amen and amen. You have a reminder uh, in your bulletin. This is the uh, official Holy Week schedule that uh, should be in your personal schedule. Join us uh, for Palm Sunday on the 2nd. We're going to have Maundy Thursday service here, um, worship 7 p.m. on that Thursday evening, Good Friday again um, on uh, April 7th, another 7 p.m. service. We're going to have our sunrise service here uh, Easter Sunday morning, 7.30. It's an ecumenical service with Faith Alliance along with uh, Fairview Evangelical Presbyterian Church right here on our lawn, followed by breakfast up at Faith Alliance, so we'll just kind of drive up the street and have breakfast there with our friends at Faith Alliance, and then come back at 10 a.m. for Easter worship. So put all those dates on your calendar, including uh, the Fisherman's Breakfast on uh, Saturday, April 1st. I want you to come to that. Um, Just a few announcements before we uh, enter into worship. We're going to be dedicating our new paraments today with a, a short liturgy. They finally have arrived. We still have about $1,100 left that you have donated towards this cause. We're shopping for uh, altar cloths and some other things, some other colors. So uh, again, I appreciated uh, the designated giving that day, we, and we got more than we expected. So uh, I'm, I'm thanking you for that. God thanks you for that. Um, just a few things. Uh, as you know, I like to, to talk about the, the uh, adult Bible studies during the week here. Um, Uh, Tuesday's uh, women's Bible study, women's community Bible study, will be changing courses and uh, studying the 30 life principles uh, starting this Tuesday at 1 o'clock. We have usually 20, 25 ladies that come here uh, on a typical Tuesday. Charles Stanley wrote this book, and uh, it's just a wonderful, a wonderful step through this uh, 30 life principles. Deb Boyd leads it along with, uh, with Donna, so uh, I urge all ladies to come. Men's Bible study here, again, Saturday mornings, uh, Men of the Sabbath study. Uh, we are uh, finishing our study in Romans. We're in the 16th chapter. We're not sure where we're going from there. We're going to take a vote next Saturday to see where we, we go from there. And, of course, our Wednesday evening study starting April 5th, uh, Mike Cornaco leads that study. Luke, Jesus, and the outsiders and outcasts and outlaws. It should be really a great uh, study through the Lenten season. So at any point in time uh, during the week, we could have 60 adults uh, studying the Word of God here. 
just a wonderful tribute. Uh, the flowers on the altar in memory of Ryan Law, given by Becky Layfield this morning. Thank you, Becky, for, for that. Uh, you'll notice again this week we have our uh, favorite hymn of the week. Uh, let's see what, who won. I, I don't even know which, which hymn did win. It's probably Amazing Grace, right? <laughs> probably. We're, we're going to be singing that as our, our favorite hymn. As you know, we, we uh, enter into a little uh, uh, March Madness uh, on our Facebook page, and uh, this week, Amazing Grace won, so we'll be singing that as well. Again, time to order the Easter lilies. The sign-up is in the back. Uh, you have the, the special dates through Lent. And um, don't forget, uh, VBS starts uh, June 19th. I know that's a little bit away, but uh, still looking and trolling around for volunteers that uh, would come to uh, the Presbyterian Church during that week and lead our children. We have had a really nice response, however, uh, for volunteers for VBS. So I appreciate that. Salvation Army donations were 34 this week, and uh, we appreciate that as well. If there is nothing else uh, for the good of the body, then let's enter into this uh, dedication service for our paraments, and I'll ask John Miller to, uh, to assist me with this presentation. We present these paraments to be consecrated to the glory of Almighty God and for the service and beautification in this church today, March 19th, 2023. The color white symbolizes purity, holiness, and virtue, as well as respect and reverence. Baptisms, marriage, and the festival days of the church year. The color green symbolizes all life, hope, and anticipation. Now you'll do the pastor's part. Okay. You've always wanted just, to be a, pra a pastor or a preacher. No, it's too many problems in a Keep pastor. going, John. <laughs> okay. We, we accept these paraments as a sacred trust and will guard and use them reverently. They will adorn this church with the colors giving glory, power, and authority to Jesus Christ and his church. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we consecrate these paraments to the glory of God. Let us pray together. Let's pray. Most loving God, without you no words or works of ours have meaning, except the gifts of our hands as symbols of our devotion. Grant us your blessing as we have consecrated these gifts to your glory, that they may be an enduring witness before all your people and that our lives may be consecrated in your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. Would you stand for the call to worship, please? Dawn is breaking. Christ's light is shining. The light of the world shines in our lives. Put aside the cares of the night. In the Lord we live in the light. Even in the darkest valley, God illuminates our paths. Even in times of despair, hope shines forth. Sleeper, awake, Christ's light is shining. The light of the world shines in our lives. Remain standing as we sing our first hymn of the faith, number 451, Be Thou. Oh God, my vision.
I'll ask our ushers to uh, come forward to move amongst us for his tithes and our offerings as we hear this beautiful offertory. Thank you, Elizabeth. Creator, we joyfully present to you our tithes and our offerings. We know you own the cattle on a thousand hills and that the earth is yours in all its fullness. 
We know that everything is at your disposal and you are not dependent on us. Nevertheless, please receive this humble offering that we give with great delight. It is our desire to honor you out of our increase to show you reign in our hearts. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Since uh, Dan tried to make me the minister this morning, (laughs) I'm going to take a little prerogative here and say, Elizabeth, thank you so much. Uh, What a beautiful gift you have from God, and thank you for sharing it. Thank you, John. Okay. Uh, We're going to be reading the scripture, and at the end of the scripture reading this morning, I'm going to ask that we'll turn to the very back of the program guide this morning and sing the first two verses of I have decided to follow Jesus. And we've been doing this now, I think, for three weeks. Yes. And uh, it's sounding better each week. It is. I I I believe that. Now, I was going to impress Dan this morning. Uh, Let me ask you a question. How many, when you were in uh, Sunday school or Bible school, had to learn and recite the 23rd Psalm? Raise your hand. Well, I was going to impress Dan this morning, and I was going to recite this. Stand out here. But then I figured a 78-year-old mind might not do so well. <laughs> so I'm going to read it this morning. So I would ask, please, for all, everyone that would like to follow along to take the Pew Bibles and turn to the 23rd Psalm. And I don't have the... Oh, yes, it is. Page 476. Okay. <laughs> Give you a moment to turn there if you'd like. Okay. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Our second scripture reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, 8 to 14. And that is found in our Pew Bible on pages 1019. For once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is a shame even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when everything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it is said... Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Let's sing. (laughs) I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me 
the cross before me, no turning back. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. Question. Do your everyday actions reflect your faith? Let's pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen and amen. Hypocrisy is both hideous and addictive. What cancer is to the body, hypocrisy is to the church. John Stott wrote in his book, Sermon on the Mount, he writes, And even though Jesus reserved his most severe words of condemnation for the hypocrite, we still seem to prefer that lifestyle to truth and authenticity. Paul warns us in our epistle lesson this morning, He says that our actions should reflect our faith, that we should live above reproach morally so we can reflect God's goodness to others. Jesus warned his disciples that they must beware of hypocrisy, pretending to be something they aren't, acting and living with a mask covering our face, Hypocrisy is nothing more than someone quite terrible going on in the heart and waits for the day to be exposed. John Milton, in his poem, Paradise Lost, writes this. He says, neither men nor angels can discern hypocrisy. The only evil that walks invisible except to God. One of the things that has troubled me greatly over the past years is the the bold instances of, of lying and obfuscation that take place in reporting news today and the apparent blessing of it on social media platforms or the absolute untrue things we hear about Christians about scripture and the declining relevance for church and worship seemingly every day, Paul instructs us to expose and challenge these things in love because our silence may be interpreted as approval. Verse 10, carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, Paul says, expose them. Expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. That is why it is said, wake up, wake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Folks, Christians must lovingly speak out for what is true and right. Paul was appealing to the Ephesians to wake up, to wake up, because they too were dangerously Slipping and sliding. It reminds me of the story of King David and Bathsheba. David committed adultery with Bathsheba, resulting in her pregnancy. Then he covered it up. He covered the sin up by arranging for the murder of Bathsheba's husband, Uriah the Hittite. So God sent the prophet Nathan, as you remember, he sent Nathan to King David to confront him. Nathan began telling the king a story 
about a rich man who cheated a poor man, taking away the poor man's only possession, a beloved you lamb. Well, hearing the story, King David said that the rich, oppressive man deserved death. Then Nathan said, you are that man. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes, David? Ouch. You say, Danny, oh, I, I, I hate to confront people. I do. I don't like doing that. Let's take a lesson, friends, from Nathan. Let's take a lesson from Nathan this morning. He used all of his communication skills to reach David's conscience. He used drama and suspense and surprise and, of course, direct confrontation. Oh, and you ask, how did it all work out for our prophet friend, Nathan? Well, I'll tell you how it worked out. 2 Samuel 12 and 13, it tells us how Nathan made out. King David responded with genuine remorse. David told Nathan, he said, I have sinned against the Lord. And then later wrote a psalm of confession, Psalm 51. Words like, have mercy on me, O God, according to thy steadfast love, according to thy abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions, O God. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. He goes on, he says, for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against you, O God. Have I sinned and done that which is evil in thy sight? Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Forgive me, O God, forgive me. Sometimes we are called to confront others with truth, including other leaders. You see, all this takes courage and wisdom and communication skills to reach another person's conscience. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, listen and understand, Matthew 15, 10. He said, listen and understand. I love this quote from the great Howard Hendricks. Seminary professor at Dallas Theological Seminary and a Philadelphian, I may add. He said this. He said, great impressions can be made from a distance, but reality can only be tested up close. You see, our actions, our words should consistently reflect the inward condition of our heart. Holding on to the external practices of this society which do not correlate with the heart are repugnant to God. We want our talk to be our walk and always, always asking the question of ourselves affirmatively, is it real and is it true? Ask yourself that question, is it real, O oh God, and is it true? The Christian community searches for truth while the world searches for reality. I know that these concepts are large and seem to overlap themselves, but I stand convinced today that we must be real in order to be right. The Christian community must change Instead of sitting stoically week after week, reciting our endless creeds and psalm prayers in utter hypocrisy. I know that the Christian movement can be strong. It can be strong and has a real opportunity to change this planet. But tragically, I see it shrinking here in the United States and, of course, almost non-existent in Europe because of lethargy and sin. 
We need to change in order for things to change. People come to church to fulfill a religious obligation I have studied are those most resistant to change. They resist the need to change, even though they hear the changeless word of God, of Jesus, preached to them every week. They resist change. Paradoxically, the ones who have real, a real Christian experience are those who are free to change their Christian practices. They commit to the, to the substance of their faith, not the form not the form. What I am encouraging strongly this morning is to focus on the heart as Jesus did. Henry Van Dyke, Princeton professor, author, diplomat, Presbyterian clergy, born in Germantown, Philadelphia, wrote the poem Doors of Daring. He wrote that barriers are invitations to courage. He writes this. He says, the mountains that enclose the veil with walls of granite, steep and high, invite the fearless foot to scale their stairway toward the sky. The restless, deep, dividing sea that flows and foams from shore to shore Call to its sunburned chivalry. Push out. Set sail. Explore. The bars of life at which we fret that seems to prison and control are but the doors of daring set ajar before the soul. Say not too poor. Freely give. Sigh not. Too weak, but boldly try. You never can begin to live until you dare to die. I have devoted the remaining days of my life to trying. To trying. I will not kowtow to this culture out here. I will not kowtow to this cultural, organizational, and synchronized way of living and moving in our faith in this 21st century way. I will not. It is only when the Holy Spirit is leading that almost every organization will work. Trust me, friends, on that. But when it isn't, it doesn't matter how good the program and organization is, it won't work. Let's tell it to each other straight, my friends. Let's tell it straight in love and in trust in the Lord God to steer the way. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows, leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right paths, bringing honor to his name. When we allow God, our shepherd, to guide us, give us courage and the actions and the words, we, friends, have contentment. We do. When we sin and lack courage, go our own way, the culture's way of the world, we can't then blame God for the environment we create for ourselves and our families. Don't blame God. God knows our streams and our green meadows and steers us with his word towards the reality of living within the shepherd's direction. Rebelling against that shepherd is not in our best interests, however. You would rather walk, who would you rather walk through the dark valley with 
my friend? Who would you walk through that valley of the shadow of death with? His strength in us can overcome a lot of things, injury and suffering and sickness, where with Jesus' courage worn as a breastplate, we are brought to the other side. God offers us protection even when enemies surround us. Don't be afraid, Jesus says. Don't be afraid. God promises that he will guide us and protect each of us throughout our lives and bring us into his house forever. There are many rallying around the New Age banner these days. Religious groups philosophical think groups finding unity, a new way, they say, to think and to understand reality, they say. Hmm. Well, Paul points out in our text this morning that it is important to avoid the worthless deeds of evil and darkness along with pleasure or activity that results in sin. But then go even further Paul says, expose these deeds because our silence affirms everything. If you don't hear anything else this morning, friends, hear those words. Our silence affirms all of it. Jesus stressed this as, well, the Sermon on the Mount He said, no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. Over the past 40 years or so, especially the last 17 years as a pastor, I've had many conversations, so to speak, with folks about a belief in hell. Is there a hell, they ask. Is there a place like that, Danny? Most New Age thinkers would say and operate under the principle that if you believe hard enough, anything will become true, but believing does not make it true. Not believing doesn't make it not true. I've ended up telling folks that not believing in hell doesn't drop the temperature down there one degree, not one. Let me close with this. The infamous unknown author wrote this about risk, and I paraphrase. He said, you laugh. (laughs) You risk appearing like a fool. You cry, Hmm. too sentimental. Reach out to someone else. Now you're involved. Show your feelings. Ha <laughs> ha. Expose who you really are. Tell someone or a crowd about your dreams, your ideas. God forbid you risk being lost to them. Canceled. Don't love too much. Hmm. There may be no return. Live too much. You could die tomorrow, they say. Don't try too hard. Well, you may fail. We don't want that on our record, do we? When we apply to college or for a job. Risks must be taken because the great hazard in life is to risk nothing. Nothing. Risk nothing, do nothing, have nothing. Chained by your certitudes, he is a slave. He has forfeited freedom. A doctor friend of mine asked me the other day why people aren't going to church anymore. I told him that That's a great question with a lot of pathology in its answer. I told him the boldness of personal evangelism, well, it's a lost art. 
I told him personal truth and authenticity are vapidly leaving us. Exposure of a testimony that does not match a lifestyle, I said, that is in profusion right now. Fear of appearing fanatical about your faith? Who likes a fanatic? Told him people just want to be liked. I just want to be liked. Reflecting God and his goodness is a lifestyle change for sure. But one change that God would both honor and bless. Let's walk this journey together, my friends, for the rest of our lives. Verse 8, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live! Live now as children of the light, for the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, truth, and find out what pleases the Lord. Folks, the church will grow when, when they see light. The church will grow when they see light, real light, authentic light, a heart-inspired walk and journey with Jesus, the church will grow. Wake up, O sleeper. Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Amen. We have this March Madness contest. Amazing Grace has won. So let's remain seated and sing this great, great hymn of the faith. Number 378.
God's praise than when we first begun. Amen. 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 So we move into uh, a time of prayer and petition. We ask God to hear our prayers from a, a corporate standpoint, from a from a heart standpoint, what do we pray about today? Who has a, a prayer concern today they want to share? We can pray together as a church and then remember these prayers uh, through the week as we devote our time each morning. I ask for prayers for two friends of mine. They are sisters, Betty and Lynn. Um, their mother is in the hospital, and it's been a very long struggle for them trying to uh, get the family to agree to get her placed where she needs care. Um, so I'm just asking for prayers that uh, God will answer their prayers. For Betty and Lynn, we'll pray. Others, what are we praying about today? What, are we, what is on our hearts today? We are a praying church. This, this means a lot. George? Well, as you just started walking around here, I hear sniffling. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not the only one. So just pray for people to just get out and be healthy and, and get over these allergies. Seasonal allergies. Such a pain. I know my son in law is battling that this morning. Bonnie has a prayer. Yeah, we need to pray about these seasonal things, don't we, Bonnie? <laughs> We take these prayers into our week. We think of these people. God knows these people. We not, may not know all of them, but he does. And he hears our, our prayers. Continue to, uh, to pray for our, um, our roof funding project. Uh, the giving has slowed down a little bit, but uh, we're faithful in, in Jesus. Um, so uh, if that is on your heart, uh, know that we are still... Uh, uh, Probably 60,000, 70,000 shy, but uh, giving continues, um, and uh, our roof is on, and it's nice and, nice and bright and dry. The vultures have left, too. I haven't seen a vulture here in, in uh, several months on the roof. They must not like the, the feel of it up there or something. Continue prayers. Vanessa's back, and Tim's back, and Hi. Amen. 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 I think we've run out of juice here. Yeah, we welcome you back from your uh, journey down to Georgia and your work down there. And, uh, and we're going to probably pray over that truck before long. I'll come down, walk down, and we'll pray over that, uh, that truck that you got from your, your brother-in-law. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And Father, you've heard the names, you've heard the, the heart, the petition for understanding, God, of, uh, of uh, increased cancer for, for friends that are suffering, Lord, for the lost, <clears throat> for those that are lonely, Lord. We're going to take 15 seconds, God, just to petition you with private prayer, with prayers that that uh, we didn't uh, articulate here this morning, God, but uh, certainly you need to hear them in our silence.
Father, we lift up to you the, all the names on our corner of concern. We, we lift up and uh, we remember Ryan Law today, Lord, with flowers. We think of, God, our communities, our, our county, our state, our country, Lord, that, uh, that we could be that light, God, that we could turn that light on, keep it on, Lord, live as you would have us live, above reproach, you love obedience, you bless it, God, we're asking for a new day, for a new dawn, God, we lift these prayers up to you, we are thankful for prayer as a community, God, we're thankful to Jesus, he taught us to pray, we didn't know what to say, Lord, but he taught his first, his disciples, his friends to pray, And now we pray that same prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let's stand, friends. Let's sing our last hymn, number 381. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, O God. Let's sing, and uh, we will leave this place. Jesus standing on the hillside, preaching to 5,000 people or more, said, 
You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they put a candle under a basket. They put it on a lampstand where it gives light to all that are in the house. Friends, let your light shine before men and women and children that they will see your good works, hear your good words. God will then be glorified. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.